Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we are going to talk about one of the best setups if you are someone who has more than $100,000. So this might either be in your checking account or in your investments. I would recommend the latter though, just because it probably doesn't make sense to have that much money in a checking account. Be aware that this is a two card setup for Bank of America. So if you don't like Bank of America, then probably skip this video. And again, even if this is applicable for you, you might want to consider the Chase Trifecta as well as the MX Trifecta. This two card setup is going to be really good for people after cash back. I think the Chase one is kind of more optimized towards normal travel, while the American Express one is more towards aspirational flights. The main reason this setup works for people who have more than $100,000 is due to how Bank of America gives different rewards based off how much money you have with them. If you have a basic checking account with less than $20,000, then you're going to get a 10% bonus. If you have between $20,000 and $50,000, you're considered gold and you get a 25% bonus. Platinum is going to be a 50% bonus for people between $50,000 and $100,000. And Platinum Honors is a 75% bonus if you have more than $100,000. So keep those multipliers in mind as we talk about the cards that are applicable for this. Jumping to the spreadsheet, you're going to see that we have three cards here, and the main reason is because it doesn't really make sense to get the travel one as well as the premium one. You really want to pick the one that makes the most sense for you. For both cards, you're going to get that 1.5% return on spend for everything else. The main difference though is that the premium one has an annual fee, while the travel one does not. For most people watching this video, the premium one is probably going to make more sense, but again, I'd always recommend crunching the numbers. Another thing to be aware of is that with the premium card, you're going to get one cent per point, regardless of how you want to redeem those points. So whether you want to redeem it towards cash back or towards your Merrill Lynch accounts or towards travel, you're still getting that one cent per point in value. On the flip side though, with the travel card, you're actually getting less value if you redeem it towards cash back and you're only getting one cent per point if you redeem it towards travel. So if you are someone trying to cash out, then I think the premium one makes more sense. So if the premium one, you're getting 2% for travel and dining and 1.5 everywhere else, travel rewards 1.5 everywhere else, and then for the cash rewards one, you're getting 3% on gas, 2% on groceries, 2% on wholesale clubs, and 1% everywhere else. On the surface level, these aren't really great multipliers at all. And again, you can probably think of other cards that do better for each of these categories. With a 10% bonus, I don't think any of these really make sense. Maybe the premium rewards one at the 2.2% for travel. Gold is pretty much exactly the same as the basic one. So again, with gas, you have something like the Ducks Unlimited. With groceries, you have something like the Blue Cash Everyday. With everything else, you have something like the Double Cash Card. For me, I don't really think it makes sense to consider the setup if you're not at least platinum. So if you're gold and below, I don't think it really makes sense, but obviously your mileage is going to vary. Just because something doesn't make sense to me based off the math, it still might make sense for you if you really like Bank of America. With Platinum, this is again where it gets really interesting. So you're getting a 50% bonus if you have between $50,000 and $100,000 in assets. The 3% for wholesale clubs make a lot of sense as well as the travel for the premium one as well as everything else for the premium one. The travel rewards one also kind of makes sense if you don't have any other travel card. Finally, the top level is going to be that 75% bonus if you have more than $100,000. So here, gas makes a lot of sense because you're getting 5.25% when the other competitive options are going to be 5%. For grocery stores at this level, I think you could make the argument for the blue cash preferred card, but again, I think you need to run the numbers. For wholesale clubs at 3.5%, I think this is going to be one of your best bets. As far as I'm aware, 3.5% for wholesale clubs is going to be the highest you're getting. For the premium one, travel at 3.5% makes a lot of sense if you're after that cash back. Again, you can make the argument for the Chase Sapphire Reserve here. And again, some people who do run this Bank of America setup are also still going to have that Chase Sapphire Reserve just to optimize some travel at least. It really depends on you. I don't really think you can play it wrong. As long as you're getting more value than you're paying in annual fees, it's going to make sense. I think where this setup really shines is the everything else category for the travel as well as for the premium card. So 2.63%. For normal people looking at this, you might be thinking 0.63%. That's not really that material. Why does it matter? And again, I think it starts to matter more as your spending level and as your income rises. 1% might not seem like it matters, but if you're buying a painting for let's say $170 million, that 1% is an extra $1.7 million. So again, even if you are super rich, it's still 1.7 million. You can still do a lot of that. 
Jumping back to the chart, we can see how it starts to make more sense at Platinum and at Platinum Honors, but not really below that. In order to qualify for these levels, you're going to have to have enough assets with them. And again, you can have $0 in your checking account and just have the money in the Merrill Lynch account. This means that you can have your retirement funds there and that's going to be fine. So ETFs, everything else under the sun. If you are interested in applying for any of these cards and you want to support our channel, a really easy way to do that would be to apply for the cards using the links on our site. You're going to be able to find these cards under cashback cards as well as travel cards. I also realize that some people are probably going to make a comment below saying that these videos are kind of irrelevant because people who have these asset levels wouldn't be watching YouTube. And I don't necessarily think that's correct just because when we've done consultations, we have a lot of doctors, lawyers, people who make six figures watching these videos. We also have a lot of students as well, so it's not necessarily all high income earners. But again, overall, I think we probably have one of the more financially savvy communities out there. To me, I don't really think it makes sense to run this setup unless you are in the late game. So let's say you're done with traveling and you just want to maximize the cash back, then this makes a lot of sense. If you're still kind of in the travel stage where you want to explore different places, where you want to take aspirational trips, where you might want to try business class or first class or stay at fancy hotels, then I think you're better off of Chase. A big part of that is due to sign-up bonuses as well as how Chase points work. So not necessarily a wrong move, it really depends on what you're optimizing towards. If you're still not sure what you want to do in terms of a setup, feel free to fill out a consultation on our website, that way we talk about strategy. If you do want to maximize cash back though, and you hate the idea of traveling, make sure to mention that in the questionnaire, that way we know to optimize towards that. I've seen a few people run the two card setup, so the cash one as well as the premium one, and then also pick up something like the Chase Sapphire Reserve or the Amex Platinum one, mostly for lounge access and for those other benefits and for better trip delay insurance and stuff like that. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on this setup? How would you kind of mix it up? Would you combine it with something else or would you specifically go towards this? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.